Welcome to Indian Laboratories Forum. Now we are learning about Clause 7.4 of ISO IEC 17025, 2017. General Requirements for the Competence of Testing and Calibration Laboratories. Hope you have learned up to Clause 7.3. If not, please refer our previous videos. Clause 7.4, Handling of Test or Calibration Items The laboratory shall have a procedure for the transportation, receipt, handling, protection, storage, retention, and disposal or return of test or calibration items, including all provisions necessary to protect the integrity of the test or calibration item, and to protect the interests of the laboratory and the customer. This particular clause is demanding the procedure for acceptable transportation conditions, receipt conditions, handling from, sampling to disposal, protection, storage conditions, retention period for remnant samples, and procedure for disposal or return of samples, based on type of samples, including all provisions necessary to protect integrity of samples, and to protect the interests of the laboratory and the customer. Protect integrity of samples means, sample should not be degraded, and should be suitable for performing the testing, or calibration activities. Laboratories should store the sample in appropriate storage conditions, based on type of sample. Precautions shall be taken to avoid deterioration, contamination, loss or damage to the item during handling, transporting, storing, or waiting, and preparation for testing or calibration. Laboratories should allow only authorized personnel to handle the samples and provide suitable facilities to avoid deterioration contamination, loss or damage to the item during handling, transporting, storing, or waiting, and preparation for testing or calibration. Handling instructions provided with the item shall be followed. The laboratory shall have a system for the unambiguous identification of test or calibration items. Laboratory should have system for allotting the unique identification for each sample received in the laboratory. The identification shall be retained while the item is under the responsibility of the laboratory. Laboratory has to use the unique identification for all the laboratory activities for the specific samples, and all the records of specific samples should be traceable with the unique identification. The system shall ensure that items will not be confused physically or when referred to in records or other documents. Laboratory has to ensure that the unique identification should not be confused physically or when referring the records of samples. It means laboratory should not give same identification for two or more samples. Each identification should be unique to each sample. The system shall, if appropriate, accommodate a subdivision of an item or groups of items and the transfer of items. Upon receipt of the test or calibration item, deviations from specified conditions shall be recorded. Laboratory should have a process of verification of samples and test or calibration request and those verification details should be recorded. When there is doubt about the suitability of an item for test or calibration, or when an item does not conform to the description provided, the laboratory shall consult the customer for further instructions before proceeding and shall record the results of this consultation. If there is any deviations or mismatch between the request and samples received, or sample received in damaged conditions, or improper information provided by the customer in the request, Laboratory has to communicate the same to customer. Upon clarifications received from the customer, laboratory has to take that particular sample for further testing or calibration. When the customer requires the item to be tested or calibrated acknowledging a deviation from specified conditions, the laboratory shall include a disclaimer in the report indicating which results may be affected by the deviation. 
If the customer requires testing or calibration even after informing the deviations or damage conditions of samples, laboratory has to provide the disclaimer in the test report indicating which results may be affected by the deviation which is requested by the customer. When items need to be stored or conditioned under specified environmental conditions, these conditions shall be maintained, monitored, and recorded. Laboratory should be have the suitable facilities and environmental conditions based on scope of testing and type of samples handling in the laboratories. If any sample need to be stored in specified conditions for example, minus 20 degree centigrade, 2 to 8 degree centigrade, 20 to 25 degree centigrade, or required conditioning at specific humidity, for example, 45% RH, 75% RH, laboratory should have the facilities, maintain required conditions. Those should be regularly monitored and recorded. Takeaway from Clause 7.4 Laboratory should have a procedure detailing about transportation, receipt, handling, protection, storage, retention, and disposal or return of test samples. Sample registration process should be established for allotment of unique identification to each sample. Where necessary, laboratory should have provisions for allotting the unique identification as per department-wise, or division-wise, or product category-wise. Upon receipt of test sample, Verification of sample details has to be done against customer request. If any deviations identified or sample received in damaged conditions, those deviations should be communicated to customer before proceed for testing or calibration. If customer accepts and requests the deviations, lab should ensure that integrity of lab does not affect due to that deviation. Reporting should be with disclaimer indicating which results may be affected by the deviation. Laboratory should have suitable facilities for storage and environmental conditions, as per the scope and type of sample handling in the laboratory. Those conditions should be regularly controlled, monitored, and recorded. Examples of non-conformances as per Clause 7.4 Laboratory is not having the procedure for the transportation, receipt, handling, protection, storage, retention, and disposal or return of test samples. Laboratory has not implemented any system for the unambiguous identification of test or calibration items. Laboratory has received the sample with batch number 12345, and customer provided the test request form with sample batch number 67891. Laboratory has considered the batch number mentioned in test request form and proceeded for sample analysis without prior consultation and confirmation of customer about batch number of sample. Sample, which required to be stored at minus 20 degree centigrade, is stored at 8 degree centigrade. Laboratory is not having storage facility for storage of sample at minus 20 degree centigrade. Laboratory is not having dedicated storage facility for the different type of samples, based on storage temperature requirements, such as ambient storage facility, 2 to 8 degree centigrade, minus 20 degree centigrade and minus 70 degree centigrade. Hope you enjoyed learning about the requirement of Clause 7.4 of ISO, IEC, 17025, 2017, and, examples of nonconformances as per Clause 7.4. Please like, subscribe, and, click on bell icon for regular updates. Thank you. Happy learning!